What's up guys, how are you doing? Today we will have a look how to make your Raspberry Pi an audio streamer, specifically a UPnP renderer without a need to install Volumio, Mood Audio Player or any other audio focused operating systems. This is the beginning, the first video from this new mini-series called GoSlim, the only audio streaming system you need. Why this way can be useful and the right for you? Well, maybe your actually everyday needs when it comes to audio streaming don't require all the extra features as other full audio software solutions developed to cover all possible needs offer, so the extra bloat is not necessary and you want to have a full control over what is running on your system and tweak it to your particular needs. Also, this might be the one of the scenarios when you just want to put more use of your Raspberry Pi besides being just an audio player and run on your Pi other self-hosted apps and services alongside as for example Adblocker, Nextcloud, Plex Media Server or whatever other self-hosted apps or services you would like. Another reason why you might be thinking to multipurpose your Raspberry Pi is that the actual streaming, playing of your music takes just so little resources from the Raspberry Pi. So basically 95% of the CPU power, RAM and other is not used. When it comes to this particular tutorial from this series dedicated to UPnP, this is the case when you just don't need any web UI and you don't mind using your phone, computer or other devices as a remote or source of your music. Most commercial audio network streamers work this way anyway, just as UPnP renderers. So you use an app from the manufacturer to control your music, or any UPnP app to play your music locally stored, or from online streaming services compatible. Plus, as you will see, if you follow my instructions, it is really not that difficult and takes just a couple of commands to set it up. But first, let me explain how exactly this solution will work and overall how UPnP works. I have split this video in chapters, so if you are already familiar with UPnP, you can skip further to the next chapter. So, if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to stream music to Raspberry Pi from your phone, tablet or a computer. You will be able to stream locally stored music files and also use your favorite online music services, which are supported by your UPnP client app, which could be for example Bubble UPnP app on your phone, which supports Tidal and Obus. What I will not show you in this tutorial is how to play music from a storage attached to your Raspberry Pi as a USB drive or NAS drive, as I will be dedicating this to another video tutorial. Now let's talk about UPnP and the terminology, which is for some confusing at first. How it works is that we need first to have a UPnP server as a source of your music you want to play. That can be simply sorted with an installation of Bubble UPnP app on your phone, which works immediately with any need of extra setup as a server and also as a UPnP client. Also, as a server can be used an app on your computer, which supports UPnP protocol. That can be even a Windows Media Player or for example Fubar 2000 with a UPnP extension installed or Odirvana and other players with connected library to a locally stored music. Another terms usually used with UPnP besides a UPnP server are UPnP client or same controller and as we already mentioned, a UPnP renderer. Now we already know UPnP server is simply a source of your music. UPnP client is an app which usually serves also as a controller. It connects to your server to source the files which needs to be sent to your renderer and serves then also as a controller, a remote, so you can control your playback, change the tracks, volume, create playlist and other. So the UPnP client sources the music data, collects them and sends them to a renderer where it's processed ideally without any further decoding if it's sent in a format it's compatible. And then the renderer plays your music on a Linux-based system 
through MPD, which stays for Music Player Daemon, to your audio output. Ok, let's move forward and start installing it. There are multiple options to choose from when it comes to UPnP renderers. But today I will show you how to install Gmedia Streamer as your UPnP renderer, which besides UPnP DCLI renderer, is one of the most used even with other complex audio OS solutions. So let's start with the installation from scratch and install a base operating system for our Raspberry Pi. I always suggest as a safe solution to go especially for beginners for Raspbian OS, but you can go for other Debian based Linux systems as Ubuntu or DietPy and this tutorial will also work just fine. Especially if you have an additional audio head attached on your Raspberry Pi, Raspbian is recommended as has the best hardware support and all known drivers are already included. As we want to reserve as much as possible of our compute resources and the main point of going this way is not to install anything what we don't need, we choose the light version of Raspbian as we don't need a desktop environment or any other bloatware. We will be connecting to our Raspberry Pi via our computer remotely over our network via SSH. So after downloading the image of Raspbian, we need a program as Rufus or Balena Etcher, which will reliably flash the image on our SD card. I prefer Rufus, but you can use whatever you prefer. When we have successfully flashed the image on our SD card, we can safely unmount the SD card reader from our computer, but we need to insert it once more again then, as we need to write one extra file on it. If you are on a Windows machine and even if you inserted the SD card reader with the SD card in it and nothing is happening, you need to try again until it's recognized and you can access the boot partition. What we need to do is to create a new file in the boot root directory on our SD card. To do so, we have multiple ways, but I just simply create a new text file there called SSH, and then I remove the extension as we need it without an extension. Alternative way how to create the empty SSH file is via command line. Click on Windows Start menu and search for CMD, open the command line, and type the drive letter your SD card was associated to. Enter and type echo.rowssh. This file will tell to our Raspberry Pi during the booting process that it should allow the SSH access. Without it, we would not be able to access our Raspberry Pi and we would need to connect it to a monitor and a keyboard to, to do the install. Ok, so now we are ready to unplug the SD card reader from our computer again and put the SD card to our Raspberry Pi. We need to connect it to just a power supply and the Ethernet cable. You can set up Wi-Fi later on if you would like to. Ok, so now that we powered our Raspberry Pi, we give it a minute to properly load the system for the first time. Now it's the time to move to a next step, which is connecting to our Raspberry Pi via SSH from our computer. That can be done in multiple ways. You can use, for example, Windows PowerShell or a free program called Putty, but I will be using my favorite SSH client called MOBA Extern. For the actual connection, you will need to know your Raspberry Pi IP address. If you don't know how to find it and how to set it up to a static IP address on your router, you can watch my video dedicated to basics with Raspberry Pi to find out. If you are on a fresh install of Raspbian or any operating system, the native SSH port is 22. So let's put Pi's IP address here and connect. First, we will be prompted to trust to this host. We confirm yes, and then we will be asked for login details. On a fresh install of Raspbian, the default user is Pi and the password is Raspberry. Okay, so now we are in. First thing I always recommend before doing anything else is to update our system as from the time the image of Raspbian was released, there could be some updates. To do so, we type a command, sudo apt update and sudo update upgrade. Now let it do its thing until it finishes.
Ok, so next step is installing MPD, a music player daemon, which will take care of the main communication with our hardware. As the UPnP renderer we will be installing works just as a frontend of this main system player. So to install MPD we need to type sudo apt get install mpd. And now is the time to install the actual Gmedia streamer packages. Again, all the commands will be on my website, so you can just simply copy and paste all the commands. Ok, so we need to install all these packages to make it work. Now let's check if our system recognizes our desired audio output via a command A plane with a parameter L. This command will list all recognized audio outputs. If you have connected a USB deck to USB port on your Raspberry Pi, it should appear here besides other onboard outputs. If you have additional audio head on the top of your Raspberry Pi, as I do, I will need to change a couple of things in my boot config of Raspberry Pi. To do so, I recommend you to follow instructions of the manufacturer, as in my case is high fiber and the head is digi plus. So I need to edit boot config file. sudo nano slash boot dot slash config dot txt. We have to remove the line dt parameter audio on. You can delete it or comment it with a hashtag, which will disable it the same way. And then, in my case, I need to add this line so my board is recognized and drivers loaded properly. dt overlay equals high fiber digi. For your particle audio head, deck, digital transport, and other, check your manufacturer manual to set it up properly. Now, setter plus x to save the document, y for yes, and enter. Back in the command line, Let's set our audio output as default device. There are a couple of ways how to do that. What I will do is edit the main ALSA config and set the default card there. Again, important is not to mess up the correct number, so let's check again with a command. A plane with a parameter L, and in my case, it's card number two. So sudo nano slash user slash share alsa alsa.conf We need to scroll down and find these two lines default CTL card and default PCM card and change those numbers to our device. Be careful these config files are space sensitive so don't add or remove any. Save the file now we can check the config file of our UPnP renderer to see what we can change. sudo nano slash etc slash default slash gmedia renderer. As we can see, this renderer offers to us in its config file just few options to change, as it's meant purely to be just a renderer, not also a media server. But we can change the name, how it will appear on our network. We can also set the initial software volume, which is by default 10, 20 is fine for me. And then if you would not set the default audio device for our entire system, we can specify it here. Okay, so let's save the config, setro plus x, y4 yes, and enter. Now we need to type last two commands. So this renderer starts and also starts always after any boot up. Sudo systemctl enable gmedia renderer.service and sudo systemctl start gmedia renderer.service okay we are done now so we can check our upnp client app which can be WPNP app on your phone, for example, or 
an audio player supporting UPnP on your computer to check if it sees our Raspberry Pi and start streaming. And as you can see, I can use FUBAR 2000 on my computer. Or Odervana to play my music. Or WPNP on my phone. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Now you might think, and how is the sound quality? And how it compares to some of the most popular audio focused operating systems? Is there a difference? Well, I will answer those questions in one of my future videos in this series later on. So stay tuned. If you like my work and found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials and audio reviews. Thank you for watching.